He changed the way we communicate. The passing of Apple co-founder Steve Jobs has people everywhere reflecting on his genius. Norma Holland joins us live from the Rochester Institute of Technology with tech guru and professor Steve Jacobs. Norma. Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, we're here at RIT at the Center for Student Innovation, a place that uh, hopefully will one day churn out another maybe person like Steve Jobs. There'll never be another Steve Jobs. That is for certain. Uh, this morning we're with Steve Jacobs, one of a professor here um, at RIT, and we've been discussing, you know, the way he changed everything. We're looking right now, this is just an example of design and how he loved, Steve Jobs loved to design. I mean, look at this computer. This is a computer uh, screen and hard drive all in one, of course. Um, and just look at the variation. I mean, that this is cool to look at. People want that, they want that. He added color, he added design, he made it important. Yep. And objects that you desired, not only objects that you used, but he also changed entertainment. Think about it, Pixar, right? Yep. So through Pixar, um, in his hiatus between his Apple years, uh, you know, through Pixar, he really helped drive computer animation, and computer animation is ubiquitous at this point. But you Not teach just, here at RIT. And we have a whole school that teaches it here. We have graduates who've worked on cars and all those films, who've yeah. really driven that technology there. Um, the whole idea of downloaded media, um, the podcast, all of that stuff. We, we had Napsters, right, right. previous to Napster, Apple. Right. But Apple is the one, and Jobs was the one, who was able to convince major media to go for it. And really, the podcast idea, the downloadable, either home-produced or commercially-produced media to go was really Apple's triumph in terms of getting that to be ubiquitous. And that's what we do in our business. We want people, of course, to download our stories and read them on their phones and on their smartphones. And so he really helped even the way I do my job as a journalist. Um, and let's be honest, I mean, you know, the whole Steve Jobs Beatles thing, I mean, he got convinced them to put their music on iTunes right. to a degree. Not all their music is on iTunes. Um, well, we thank you so much for taking time out with us. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll talk with you just a little bit later on. Um, and so we can, you know, interview you for later. But there you have it. I mean, how can you ever sum up a life like Steve Jobs? You can't. Uh, but the hope is that there's someone out there who can come up with great ideas in the future future. Um, and that's the hope, I guess. And, and maybe they'll come from, from Rochester. You just never know. I'll be an RIT tiger. <laughs> <laughs> A little shameless plug there, if you will. And I like your Steve Jobs outfit this morning. I really do. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for taking the time, Steve. Always a pleasure, Norma. All right. Reporting live at RIT, Norma Holland, back to you. All right, Norma. Thanks.